Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Orit. If you're looking to learn social media marketing, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to give you two hours of free content from this course, Social Media Marketing Simplified. This entire course is created in a way that will help you strategize and focus your efforts in one place so that you'll have time to market yourself and still do the creative stuff that we all love doing. So in this video, I'm gonna share the first two hours of content with you. We're gonna look at these sections here. So we're gonna look at creating your marketing plan. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna get out of the videos. We're gonna look at intention, so creating a goal for your marketing. We're gonna look at some strategies to do with how to get more done in less time to do with your social media marketing. We're gonna talk about your avatar, which is your target market. It's really important to identify who it is that you're marketing to so you can start to create content for your audience and connect with them on a better level. We're gonna look at defining your brand. We're gonna talk about the different types of social media content and how to organize that. We're gonna talk, we're gonna look at different examples of the of these social media content. Um, we're gonna look at creating the basics of creating your social media marketing plan in seven steps and start setting up your platforms and talking about which one you should focus on using as well for your audience. So this is everything in this video here. If you hear me talking about worksheets and uh, downloadable worksheets and PDFs in the videos, then that content is available in the course. If you have questions that come up, you can go ahead and click on the link below in the description so you can come to this page here, click on take this course and sign up with Udemy. You'll be able to get those worksheets, those PDFs and access to me as well. I'll be able to answer all of your questions and frustrations around social media marketing. That's what I'm here for guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the course. Grab a pen, paper, coffee, water, whatever you need, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it's Arit here. Welcome to Social Media Marketing Simplified. And in this video, I'm basically gonna summarize for you what you're gonna get out of this course. If I had to sum up this course in a seven-step plan, this is exactly what it would look like. And this is actually a slide that was taken out of one of the lectures in this course, which we'll go into in more detail later on. But just really quickly to run through what you'll be learning in this course, we're gonna look at the foundations first. So you're gonna set a goal, set an intention for what you want to achieve with your marketing plan. We're gonna help you identify who it is that you're marketing to so you can understand what types of content will connect with your audience more. Next, we're gonna help you look at one social media platform to focus on. So we're gonna help you decide what that platform will be and also help you understand it better, optimize it so that you can start to get more followers and engagement happening. The next thing we're gonna look at is creating content. So what types of content works best? And looking at examples of each of those types of content. The idea here is to batch your content creation. And once that happens, we're gonna look at a publishing schedule. So I'm gonna give you some tools, some great resources that will help you post on autopilot, which is gonna be amazing in terms of leveraging your time. I'm also gonna give you tips for interacting on social media because social media is a two-way street, right? It's a conversation. So we're gonna look at creating engagement on your platforms and then looking at greasing this entire wheel. So that's what step seven is here. So looking at this system and really making sure it works on its own so that you're able to focus in a different area for marketing or on a different social media platform. So I'm really excited to get started teaching you in this course and I can't wait to see what results you produce. Let's get started and I will see you in the next video. In this section, I wanted to go over four really important concepts with you before diving into content creation and posting and that sort of thing. And I want you to think of these four things as the building blocks for a strong foundation to set your social media presence on. Okay? Um, and just to give you an example, for like if you're building a skyscraper, for example, or your empire on a weak foundation, 
the entire structure will be unstable and can easily crumble beneath you and can turn into nothing. So we want to avoid that and really pay attention to uh, understanding these four concepts that I'm about to talk about. So the first element in building a strong foundation is having an intention for every aspect of your social media marketing. You know, sometimes we'll start up a bunch of social media accounts and we'll start posting a bunch of stuff because that's what we think we're supposed to be doing. But that's not necessarily true. You know, marketing on purpose is what will help you get the results that you want faster. And not only that, it'll help you work smarter and avoid wasting too much time on social media, which we all know is really easy to do. You know, I used to spend way too much time thinking about what to write, um, where to find my pictures and deciding what to post and that sort of thing. And um, that was happening to me because I didn't really take the time to clarify exactly what the purpose of all of it was. So once you have that clarified, you know, once you really clarify what your target looks like, it's much easier to identify with it. And you can do that by asking yourself the following question. And I want you to ask yourself, what do I intend to achieve? And apply that question to every aspect of your social media. So what do I intend to achieve by creating this Twitter account? Or what do I intend to achieve by posting this particular piece of content? And I know it sounds, it might sound too simplistic, um, but trust me, this is really the starting point to getting into the habit of thinking this way so that eventually it just all becomes automatic and so that all of your actions online that follow will be, they'll be purposeful and they'll also be in line with your goals. So speaking of goals, you know, um, we want to really clarify what those are and I want to help you clarify what it is that you intend to achieve. Because having an intention for each aspect of your marketing is, uh, is identifying which roads to take, but if you don't know ultimately where you're going, those roads will lead to nowhere. So I want to help you really see what it is you're working towards. And so I put together what's called the Dream Driven Goal Setting Worksheet. And this will really help you see, um, it will help you take a step back from all of this stuff and just really see what it is that you're working towards. All right, so your action step for this lecture is to complete the Dream Driven Goal Setting Worksheet. And I want you to share your someday goal with me. This will make more sense once you complete the worksheet. But um, once you work through it, you'll be setting a someday goal. And I want you to share that goal with me in our Facebook group. You know, I want to know what it is that you're working towards. And by posting it in the group, you'll also enter into a community of other ambitious creative entrepreneurs that we'll all, we're all supporting each other in our journey to success. And you never know, you might also meet somebody who opens the door for you. So post your someday goal in the Facebook group after completing the worksheet. And I'll be right here waiting for you in the next video. See you soon. In this lecture, we're going to get into the second element of building a strong foundation for your presence online. And that is to realize that you are a business. Now, some of you totally get that and understand that. But I know there's someone watching this out there right now where they just felt like a dark cloud hovered over their head because I said the word business. And, you know, that happens with a lot of artists. A lot of artists don't even like to think about the business side of things. But it's really an integral part of your success. You know, when I was first starting out in the music business, I, I did fall into the trap of this starving artist label. And realizing that you are a business is really what can take you away from that starving artist label to becoming a thriving artist. You know, for me, when I was first starting out, I, um, I, I was fortunate enough to not reach the point of literal starvation, but it was really tough. I um, had a lot of dollars coming out of my pocket because I was 
hiring dancers, recording music, producing music videos, going on tour, and next to nothing, next to zero was coming in um, in terms of dollars. So um, it was really tough and that's, you know, that's the definition of creating debt and it's not smart and it's not something that I want you to experience. So it's really important to understand the business side of things. Um, I realized that if I was going to do this for the long run, you know, if I was going to make a living out of what I love, then I really needed to understand the business side of things and especially like owning those business skills and owning especially those marketing skills. So taking this course is a really great step on your part because I'm going to teach you some of those skills. And you know, I want you to to start treating your talent more like a business. And I've come up, I've put together what I call the three V's, which are really the elements of, of a business. And they'll help you start thinking about your creative career in these terms as well, in these business terms. So the first thing is having a vision. So as a business, you need to have a vision. And that means uh, deciding what your brand is and deciding what you want to be known for and, and you know, who, who you want to be. And if you filled out the Dream Driven Goal Setting Worksheet in the previous lecture in this course, then you would have already have figured out the answers to all of those questions. If you haven't, then I want you to go back and fill out that worksheet because it's such an important part of this. So if you fill that out, you're already one third of the way there. The second thing that you need to have as a business is visibility. You know, um, and that's the marketing side of things. That's what you're learning in this course. And you can be the most talented person in the world, but if you're not sharing your talents with anybody, you know, if, if nobody knows you exist, then you're not going to be able to sustain your career as an artist. You, you really need to be able to put yourself out there so you can gain those fans, those followers, which eventually become customers. So that's the visibility. And the third thing is value. So as a business, you need to be providing value to the market. And, you know, this can take many different different forms in what you're doing. Um, but someone once said to me, I'm going to share this with you, someone once said to me, people vote with their wallets. If someone's buying a ticket to your show or your album, that person is not only a fan, they are your customer. And I want you to think about that because you know when we're thinking about social media, we're always thinking about gaining fans and followers. Um, but those 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 people who are following what you're doing and the content that you're that you're putting out there, they're more than that. You know, they can be turning into customers, which can lead into you making money doing what you love. So it's really important to figure out the value that you're putting, what value you're putting out there online. And we're going to talk more about what types of content you can be putting out there to create value in the market. We're going to be talking more about that in the following sections of the course. But I want you to start thinking about now what is it that you can provide in terms of a product or a service to your online audience. And that's your action step in this lecture here. So based on your talents and skills, decide what product or service you can offer. Maybe it's a physical thing, like for example if you're a painter, maybe it's a painting or maybe it's teaching somebody how to paint. If you're a photographer, maybe what you're offering in terms of value to the market is is capturing, helping families capture those memories that are just so special in their lives and maybe providing them with an album or a photo or teaching them how to organize their memories. There's just so many things that that you can offer to the market with the talents and skills that you have. I know you're extremely talented. So there is something that you have to offer. I want you to believe that. And I want you to decide what that is and write it down somewhere. And if you need help with any with ideas or anything like that, feel free to post in the 
discussion group or in the Facebook group as well and we'll definitely help you out with that. Alright, so that concludes the Business of You lecture of this course and I will be right here waiting for you in the next video. See you soon! Hey and welcome back to Social Media Marketing Simplified. My name is Arit and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the third foundational piece that's going to really change things around for you in your social media marketing. I call it the magical formula because it truly is magical to me, but it's not something that I made up. It's actually based on a long-standing principle called the 80-20 rule or Pareto's principle. You may have heard about it. It's actually a, a principle that is um, that can be applied to many different in many different areas and a lot of successful people use this because it really helps leverage their time and spend um, and helps helps them identify what's working and what's not so that they can spend more of their time on what's working and eliminate what isn't. So for the purposes of this video, you know, I'm going to tell you what that principle is and I'm going to tell you how you can benefit from it, especially with your social media marketing, but I'm not going to go into the details of how it works or why it's true. Um, that can just be something that you can, you can Google 80-20 rule or Pareto's principle and you can find a ton of information online on, on all of that. So basically here's the principle. It states that 20% of sources will be producing 80% of your desired outcomes. So basically that means that a small percentage of what you're doing is going to be giving you the most of results, the most percentage of results of what you want. So in applying that to social media, it can be extremely valuable because let's be honest here, social media is, it can be a really, really powerful thing, but it can also be a black hole a complete time waster. You know, there's so many things that you can be doing online, um, but you know, if you're not, if you don't really know what's working, it can be a huge time waster. And so we want to be able to use this principle in a way that'll help us evaluate what's working and make the most out of that so that you can really focus your time in that area. So this magical formula like I said, is based on the 80-20 rule and it's a social strategy that states 80% of your time should be dedicated to informing, entertaining, and educating your online audience because that's what's going to get you the most results. And 20% um, of the time, that's where you can be promoting yourself, selling your product or service. Now this is a proven social media strategy that uh, I use and a lot of successful marketers use and, um, and, it's, and it's something that really helps us see what people are, what people are wanting online right now. They want, they want to, to come to a fan page or a Twitter account or some sort of place where they can be informed, entertained and educated because that's where we see most engagement with. We see more likes, more comments, more shares on posts that do these things, that inform, entertain, and educate. And so this way you're really able to connect more with your audience and not only gain, uh, not only gain more fans and followers, but you're able to also build loyalty with and, and really build that connection with your existing fan base as well using this formula here. So most of the time, you want to be giving to your audience online and, um, and less time asking. So that's not to say that you know selling is bad or anything like that or it doesn't work. It totally does. It's just that you know this is a form of what we call content marketing and it's a really a magical formula that's going to change the way you market online and will also be producing more results for you. So that's something to keep in mind and I want you to copy that formula, that chart that you just saw there. You can go, go back and either take a snapshot of it with your phone or uh, take a screenshot of it 
and put it in a place where you can always come back to it and use it as a reference for your marketing because it's really going to help you get more results online. All right, so that's all I have to say for this video. I will see you in the next module. Ciao for now. Hey again, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit here. The fourth foundational piece that will really help you build a solid social media presence online is knowing who you are marketing to. Knowing who your ideal fan or follower may be and understanding them more and always having this in mind when you're marketing online. So this ideal fan or follower is your avatar, okay? And it's really important to understand who your avatar is because a huge part of marketing online is providing value to your audience, right? So if you don't know who your avatar is or you don't know who you're marketing to, then you won't be able to tell whether that content is valuable to them or not. So this is really a huge golden nugget right here because, you know, a lot of people just post stuff online and they don't really understand why they're not getting any interaction or engagement or they're not really connecting with people online. It's because of this. It's because, you know, you really need to truly understand who it is that you're marketing to. And um, and it's, it's really not about what you want to post. It's about providing value to whoever's listening on the other side of that screen and targeting your content to them so that you're better able to communicate with them and relate to them on their level. This is why um, companies will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on market research. You know, it's, it's because they want to be able to really understand their market so that, like I said, they're better able to communicate and relate to them. So, um, so for example, let me give you an example here. If you're a makeup artist, um, it's not enough to say that your avatar is a girl who likes getting their makeup done you really need to specify more about that person and um, and ask yourself, okay, well, who am I really targeting? Am I talking to high school students, high school girls who um, are looking for makeup services to be done for their graduation? Um, or am I talking to maybe 20-something year old ladies who just like to get done up once in a while when they go out? Or are you targeting other artists, perhaps, other musicians or actresses um, or actors even that need your makeup services for film? So really understanding who it is you're targeting to is, um, is going to allow you to, like I said, cater your content and, um, and make it more for them. And so that's just, an, that's just one example. You know, you want to, whoever, whoever I'm talking to out there, whether you're a photographer, designer, musician, you want to really be able to ask yourself who you want to target online and understand everything you can about them. Because marketing to everyone is marketing to no one. And that's, that's really the truth, is that you want to be targeting a specific market when you are doing your social media marketing online. So you might have guessed it, your action step here is to identify your, your avatar and I'm gonna help you do that with the worksheet provided um, that's attached to this, this video here. So I'm gonna ask you to complete the avatar worksheet and you're gonna design a profile of who it is that you're marketing to. You're going to understand, um, you're gonna do your research on who it is you're talk, talking to, um, who they respect, what they struggle with, what excites them. And if you, if you know who, you're, who you want to target, but you don't necessarily know much about them, you can always go to forums and, or Facebook groups or fan pages. These are all really great places to see what people are asking and to gauge what they're struggling with or what really excites them and um, and just to find out more about them. So I'm going to leave you with that. Complete the avatar worksheet here and I will see you in the next video. 
Welcome back, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Orit here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about branding. I recently surveyed you guys, the students in the Social Media Marketing Simplified course, and you really wanted to learn more about how to brand yourself. So this is what we're gonna talk about. And before I go into how to really define your brand from the inside out, versus the outside in, which we'll talk about that in a few seconds. Um, I wanna really define what branding means. So branding means what you stand for as an artist, as a creative entrepreneur, as, as your company. What does your company stand for? What do you represent in this overcrowded marketplace, right? We're exposed to so many different images, words, marketing messages, hundreds of thousands of them on a daily basis. And so a lot of people have sort of started to become skeptical and and um, created a filter in their mind about what they want to engage with and what they don't want to engage with. And the brain starts to create these shortcuts, right? And this is what branding is. It's the box that people put you in when they decide whether they want to engage with you or not. So when the brain starts to create these shortcuts, they, um, it really is a shortcut for choosing you as the person that they want to do business with or the person that they want to engage with, with reading your content online or, or um, you know, reading a blog post, watching your video, uh, buying something from you. So that's, that's why it really becomes important to define a firm and solid brand ahead of time so that you can already define what that shortcut means for people. Obviously, you wanna be creating a positive shortcut, so a positive association between whatever it is that you offer and what, and um, a positive association between what you offer and how people feel or the experience that they get from, from associating with you, your brand, your company uh, as, as a creative entrepreneur. So that's really the most important point that I wanna make in this entire video is that defining your brand really comes down to the overall feeling or experience that you want other people to have when they associate with you. And the way we're going to, to, to come up with that is with the why, how, what. And so let's start off here this is what it means to define a brand from the inside out. The inside out is really defining the why. Why do you exist as a company? Why do you exist as an artist? Why are you doing what you do? And, and deciding what mood or feeling you want to give to people. So that's from the inside. So do you want other people to feel um, to feel excited when they engage with your brand? Do you want them to feel like playful, having a fun time? Do you want them to maybe feel um, uh, empowered? Or do you want them to feel, um, you know, there's so many different types of moods and feelings that you can describe, but really defining what that is, is the first step. So that's your why. The second step is the how. So how do you want to bring about that mood or feeling? What message do you want to give to people from not just each piece of content, but as a whole, as a company, as a whole, as, as you as an artist, what message are you trying to bring forth? Is it to encourage people to be more creative? Is it to encourage people to look at things a little bit differently? Is your message to think differently like it is with Apple, right? Everything that they do comes back to this message of thinking differently, being creative, being unique. And it also comes back to their message of simplicity. And from that, they've created the product or the service that, that comes back to that message, right? Everything that Apple does is in terms of beautifully sleek design, but simple items, simple computers, music devices, um, and also designed in a creative manner for you to be able to think differently about how you engage with music or how you, how you work on a computer. So 
defining your value or message is the how that you're going to bring about those moods or feelings. And um, that's really the next step. The what, then you're defining the what. The what is what are these little things that will contribute to having others, giving others the sense of this 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 message and the sense of positive feelings that you've defined. Um, this is what where the design of your website, for example, comes in, your logo, your fonts, your colors, your images, each of these things, when someone looks at it, because we're very visual people, when someone looks at it, they're going to have a certain sense of, of what it is that you stand for unconsciously. Most of this happens unconsciously. If you look at different fonts, um, and I know we don't think about this on a, on a daily basis, but if you look at different fonts, each one of those fonts expresses something different. You know, there's the really joker style, playful kind. There's the really um, academic kind, book antica times new Roman. And then there's the, the more casual kind, comic sans, all of these kinds of things. So with something so concrete as fonts, um, there's also different feelings that you get from colors and, and this, this type of thing. So defining your brand from the why down to the what is really the most important way that you can define what it is that you stand for as an artist, as a creative entrepreneur, because everything that you do in the what will already have a foundation set. You would have already set that foundation with the why and the how. So your action step is to download the Define Your Brand worksheet. In that worksheet, you're going to see the why, the how, um, the different elements, and you're going to come up with descriptive words that describe you as an artist and your brand. And um, also, there's another part of that worksheet that includes resources for where you can start to implement your brand. So in terms of getting fonts, um, where to find images, where to get your um, social media banners designed, which I know we've talked about in other videos, but it's all kind of in one place here for you. So you can define your brand in the exercise of the worksheet and then go ahead and start implementing it right away with those resources that are listed. All right, guys. So. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to post them in the discussion. I'm always here to help, and I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Hey there, and welcome to Social Media Marketing Simplified. This is Arit here, and welcome to the Get Creative section of this course. This is where the fun stuff is going to be happening. So in the previous section, you did your preliminary work, hopefully. You um, got clear on your intentions for marketing. You got clear on your avatar, who you're marketing to. You also have the magical formula in your back pocket, and you're clear on the three V's for treating your talent more like a business. So once you have all, once you've set that foundation, you can actually start getting into the content creation side of things, which is what we're going to be talking about in this section here. So we're going to start brainstorming ideas for your posts in this section. And by posts, I mean anything that you're going to be uploading onto your social media accounts. So particularly, particularly for this course, it'll be Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. So we're going to start coming up with those ideas. And I'm actually going to share with you one of my favorite tools for organizing all of your ideas for posts. And it's actually a tool that will also help you capture inspiration wherever you go so that nothing will ever leave you. It's kind of like a second brain for me. So really excited to share that with you. And it's a free tool as well, which is a bonus. And um, so we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about the five categories for content. And these five categories are like... Um, general topics of posts that we're gonna go through together and these will work with no matter what industry that you're in whether that's fashion digital media um, design music you know it even works if you're not in the arts industry so it um, these these are five categories of content that we're gonna go through together 
And I just want you to keep in mind as well, when we are walking through these categories, if any of these five categories don't resonate with you, then I want you to stay away from it because the whole point is to connect with people online and put out value that you believe in. So if something isn't in line with your brand and you're posting that and it's just not you, that's going to come across to the viewer on the other side of the screen. And we definitely, we definitely don't want that. We want to stay away from that. So you can totally, you know, put, uh, leave something out, leave one of these categories out. If it doesn't re resonate with you, just up your volume for posts in the other areas. It's good to diversify your posts and have different types of posts, but if something doesn't resonate with you, then I would say just stay away from it. So um, we're going to talk about that, and also um, I have some more action steps, of course, at the end of every video. So at the end of every uh, category that we're going to go go through together, I'm going to ask you to actually come up with 6 to 12 pieces of content within that category. So I just want to explain that a little bit. If you are doing the bare minimum, so you're coming up with 6 posts in a category, if we're for all 5 categories rather, then that's 6 times 5 is 30. So by the end of this, you will have at least one post a day for the next 30 days, for the next month. Which is, which is awesome. Um, but if you can do more, then that's, that would be ideal, of course. But I want you to work with whatever fits into your schedule. So, you know, I don't want you to go, get overwhelmed or anything like that. But if you can do more than six posts, that'll be absolutely great. And then you can also start to add some more, um, add some more variety in your posting as well. So, uh, lots of stuff, lots of juicy material coming up ahead. Really excited. And the action step for this lecture is just to take a breather. You know, we're going to get into a lot of stuff here. And I, it's sometimes just, it's good to just step back from everything and go for a run, make yourself a cup of coffee or tea, and just to hit the reset button and refresh so that when you come back to the screen, I'll be right here waiting for you and you'll be ready to go. All right, so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Hello, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Areet. In this video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite tools for capturing ideas and organizing them when it comes to posting social media content. And the way I see it, there are two z areas or zones, let's say, where people really struggle with. And one of them is coming up with ideas for content, figuring out what to post. That's where a lot of time is spent, and it's really not needed if you have the right tools. And the other area is staying consistent. So that's another area that people struggle with, is staying consistent with posting and, and your marketing online. But the way I see it, if you always have ideas ready to go, ready to be posted, then it shouldn't be difficult for you, or at least it should make it easier for you to stay consistent with your marketing, because it's just a matter of putting that content out there. So this tool really helps simplify your social media marketing because it really helps you to get organized and to have those ideas all in one place ready to ready to go and it also helps um, in capturing those ideas when they come to you wherever you are so I would like to introduce you to the tool here it's called Evernote and you might have heard of Evernote you've been around for a while um, and I really enjoy working with this it's an organizational tool and it makes your life a lot easier it's absolutely free to create an account and it allows you to store all of your ideas in one place and um, the cool thing about this is that they also have an app so wherever you're at if an idea pops into your head or if you see something that you're like oh that would be really cool to post on Facebook or oh that would be a cool idea for a video that I want to do on YouTube then you can just 
you can either make a voice note out of it or you can take a picture or you can just type it into your phone and voila you just upload it it's all in one place and you can keep those ideas organized as well so I want to show you what that looks like and um, so you can get an idea of, of how to use it so I'm just going to go to the browser here And like I said, it's absolutely free to sign up for an account. So all you need to do is just click on the Sign Up Now button. But since I have an account, I'm going to sign in and let you see what it looks like on the back end. Now keep in mind, this is the, the obviously I'm showing you here on the desktop, but um, the app that you can download, which they have for both iPhone and Android, by the way, the app that you can download is just... Um, I find it actually easier to use than the desktop. It's really simple because you can capture things right away with your phone and then just save it in the place that you want to save it in. So with Evernote, I'm going to show you here what you're looking at. Everything on the side here, they're all different notebooks. And um, like you see here, I have separate notebooks for, for different projects. I have um, I have reference material that I always would like to come back to. I keep all of my business stuff in one area. And within those notebooks, you can create subcategories sub to really organize your stuff, kind of like um, having different folders in a computer. Now, the way you can use this and its application to uh, organizing your content is you can create a separate a notebook for each type of content which is what we're going to be doing in this section when you're coming up with ideas for content you're going to be storing them in your in one place in Evernote so just to show you here I'm going to create a notebook and this is how you do it just by clicking this button here and select new notebook and let's say um, you're going to create a notebook on inspiration so any type of inspirational content that comes to mind oh that's right I already have a notebook called inspiration so I'm just gonna call it inspiration 2 so any sort of uh, inspirational uh, things that might have happened to you that day that you perhaps you recorded a voice note on it and because you know you want to uh, post it later as a, or perhaps you recorded a video on it even and you want to post that up to YouTube um, anything like that that's inspirational you want to put in that in that notebook and let's say as well um, you have let's say another category of content that's applicable to you let's say this is like behind the scenes kind of stuff so whatever you're doing in in your work perhaps behind the scenes means what's going on when you are filming a music video or um, how is how how does the making of your painting or your project happen so perhaps that's a category that you like to work with as well so I just created those two notebooks which you can see here behind the scenes and inspiration and so whenever those ideas come to you you're going to create it as a new note and this is the button here to create a new note so let's say something inspirational. Um, you you someone told you an inspirational quote, and you want to create that or save that as a note in your inspirational notebook. So I selected the notebook and I clicked on new note. And let's just say this is a quote that your friend Jen uh, shared with you and this is the quote and you want to post that later on Facebook so that's now saved and everything saves automatically so there's no save button here but if you wanted to you know uh, for whatever reason format your ideas like um, have different font sizes it's, it's almost like a word it actually is like a word editor here so you can use those different options here um, if it was a picture that you saved on your computer you can upload that here and um, and other things you can do as well you can insert a table 
Um, you can create bullet points as well. So um, maybe Jen ha shared with you a few points that were inspirational. So you can you can make those into separate points here by selecting that and clicking on the bullets here. There's lots of things you can do. Another thing that I often use is whenever I, I create a note, I sometimes make those different points into checklists or into a checklist so that each one has a checkbox beside it so that when it comes time to scheduling the content, I just have to check the box and that tells me I've, I've done that. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So you select whatever you want to put a checkbox beside. Oh, no, that's not how you do it. Let's undo that. Um, I'm just going to delete the bullet points. I think that's what's confusing it. Yeah, so whatever you want to add a checkbox to here, you select this button, Insert To Do, and it'll put a checkbox before it. So let's say this is a separate point of inspiration that I want to post um, as a separate post. So I'm going to add that checkbox there. So like I said, whenever you've, let's say you've already shared that quote on Facebook, so you just check mark it by just clicking there. So it's really cool what you can do. Um, it just makes things really easy. You can also set reminders here with this button. And um, that's helpful when, let's say you know you want to post, you have an idea for, um, let's say you have an idea for a really good Christmas post or, or something that's, that has to do with has to do with time, then you can set yourself a reminder to make sure you post that or you schedule it to be posted on a certain date so that it'll pop up as a reminder for you and you can get that done. So that is, um, that's one thing I wanted to show you. Another thing is here you can add tags to the post or to the note rather. So when you, let's say tags are like quotes, Jen, um, any sort of keywords that are associated with the note so that when you want to search for the note, you can easily do that by adding the tags here and it'll find it quickly for you. So um, that's one thing I, sh I wanted to show you is how to create the note and now you know how to create a notebook as well. What if you wanted to organize things and just put it all under one stack? Like see here I have different notebooks and they're all under the stack of Acetino. Um, let's say you wanted to group your inspiration and behind the scenes notebook because that's all going to go under ideas for Facebook content. So all you need to do is just click on what you want to combine and drag it and drop it on top of the other notebook, it'll ask you for a stack name. So that's the overall name uh, or overall content name that you want to choose. So let's say this is Facebook content. This will all be under Facebook content. Click Save. And you can see here it stacked behind the scenes and my inspiration note right here. It's really um, easy to use, very simple. Um, it's a, it works on a drag and drop. So let's say you accidentally created a note under, under one notebook here that you want to drag into another notebook. You can, you can do that like I'm doing right here. I'm dragging it into behind the scenes and that will pop into behind the scenes. So lots of cool things you can do. And like I said, um, if you download the app on your phone, you can have access to this wherever you go and you can sync it so that whatever you see on your desktop is also what you see on your phone. So really cool tool. I'm going to go back here into the presentation and share with you what your action item is, which you probably guessed is to sign up for a free Evernote account. I want you to go ahead and do that and just play around with it and um, just get into the habit of you know creating notes and creating those notebooks. Maybe you already have ideas for what you want to, um, how you want to lay everything out so you can go ahead and create those notebooks. So go ahead and do that, play around with it because in the following videos 
when we come up with ideas within each category, we're going to save them in those notebooks. So go ahead and do that. Start playing around. Have fun with it. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Hello, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit here, and we're going to get into the first category of content that you're going to post on your social media accounts. And the first one that I want to talk about is inspiring or motivational content. And I actually find that with this category, I get the most engagement, um, so that's the most likes, more comments, more shares, more retweets, repins. I get the most engagement with this category than any other category. And I find that people really connect with inspiring and motivational posts um, because think about it. I mean, when you hear something inspiring, you typically feel something positive. And if you know you you want your fans and followers to associate a positive experience with you because if you are that source of inspiration for them they're going to really appreciate you for that and you you will be able to connect with your audience on a deeper level so i'm going to share with you a few ways that you can do um, inspiring posts and these are by no means all of the ways. It's just three ways that I use that have really worked for me. So the first thing, the first way that you can um, that you can use to do an inspiring post is through telling a story. So maybe you've gone through something in your life that you know will inspire others or that will teach others some sort of life lesson. Something perhaps happened to you that taught you a lesson that you'd like to share. Or if you can't think of anything that's happened to you, you can always share someone else's story that inspired you or that motivated you somehow. So if you see here on the left, this is a post that I did not too long ago on Facebook. And it was just really about telling the story of what I went through that past week, um, or actually past two weeks and um, telling the story of how I felt and all leading up to that very moment, which was me leaving my job. And it was just, um, it was just really a monumental moment for me. And I felt, I felt compelled to tell that story. And I don't know if you can see here on the bottom, but people loved it. You know, 100, over 118 likes on that post. Here's another post that I did um, that was just telling people about when I decided to become a singer and um, how this was one of the first awards that I ever won as a singer and just telling people about, you know, as soon as I decided to, to become a singer and to go after what I wanted to do, things really changed for me. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're telling a story, people, people connect with it more. And I find that those posts really work, work well. The second thing that you can do is you can post quotes. Now, um, you, you can post text quotes, so they don't have to be picture quotes. I just find that more visual things are, they, um, more like pictures, more videos, those work better and just capture pe more people's attention. So, you know, you can always just write out a quote that you heard on Facebook or you can tweet something. But if you have a picture quote, People love sharing these, which is really good for you if they are sharing something from your wall. Um, in this example here that I wanted to show you, this quote was just, you know, it, this, I have this on my Pinterest account and um, as of, I guess, last week, which was when I made this slide, um, there have been over 1,700 repins and over 430 likes on this quote. So people really love these. I mean, it won't go for every single picture quote, but it's just to show you um, how much that these types of posts resonate with people. And um, yeah, so just to show you another example here, this is another picture quote. You can easily find these on, just by Googling, inspiring quotes or inspiring picture quotes. You can even add an extra element of what it is that you do. So inspiring quotes for musicians or inspiring quotes for fashion designers 
you know, whatever works for you. Just make sure that, you know, it always has some sort of watermark on the bottom there so that you're not stealing anybody's quotes and you're always giving credit to whomever came up with it. Um, here is another example of a picture quote that I did. I actually combined my own pictures from an event that I did with this quote that I wrote and I actually created this on Instagram um, and I posted it to Facebook so a bit of repurposing of content there and um, you know lots of people really like this one as well um, so you can just get creative there's lots of sources um, that you can use to come up with those picture quotes now motivational videos are really really powerful and I just want to go over to the screen to show you just gonna show you an example so you can go to YouTube and you know you can type in <coughs> pardon me you can type in inspiring videos let's gotta spell it right inspiring videos and whatever applies to you. So inspiring videos for, let's say, musicians. But if you, you know, you're in a different field, you can put inspiring videos for actors, inspiring videos for photographers. And there's just so much content for you to share with others. People are waiting for you to share these things. So, you know, if you watch something here that really resonates with you and you want other people to hear it and they are your target audience, um, just go ahead and grab the quote, or sorry, grab the, grab the link, not the quote. Um, I'm just going to pause this here so I can show you just in case you don't know where to grab the link from. You can either grab it at the top here or you can grab it by clicking share. All right, so I'm not sure what happened there, but the previous video cut out, so I'm just going to continue where I left off. Um, I was showing you how to grab the link to share, so um, all you have to do is just either grab it from the top or click on share, and um, you got you have all of these buttons to share directly onto your social media accounts, or you can just grab this link here. So. Um, Another thing that I wanted to share, I just want to share with you a couple examples. Uh, Eric Thomas is an amazing, inspirational, motivational entrepreneur who always coaches on uh, success and going after your dreams and following your passion. So he has a ton of content that you can use and this is for any, no matter what industry you're in. So lots of great videos here. You can actually um, you should go directly to his channel. Just find his channel. It's called E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. So there's lots of stuff there. And um, and this particular video, I just wanted to actually play an example for you so you can just get a sense of what I mean by an inspirational or motivational video. So here we go. So all these dreamers out there keep dreaming, man, but, but you know... Sometimes you got you gotta wake up from a dream and go get it. You get out of it what you put into it. It's, the game is so simple, y'all just ain't listening. If you're chasing your dream, you're not running fast enough. Run faster. That's you gotta work. So I mean that's just a few seconds of the video. This is um this is I wanted to play this for you because this is an example of someone that you you know maybe you have someone that you look up to or follow in your industry um, someone who's famous or reputable uh, someone that you that you want would want to be your mentor and you know they've put out videos like this speaking directly to you about what it takes to be successful in the industry so things like this I, I mean I I came across this because you know I'm a singer and I I I work with hip hop artists and you know I do collaborations with them so this I, I really liked this video a lot and I shared this on my wall so this is just one example here um, like I said you can find someone in your own industry that you look up to and find out if they have an inspiring video that they put out and share that so I'm just gonna go back to the presentation here 
and we're gonna hit this button. All right, so, um, so yeah, hopefully that provided lots of great examples for you to get those mental juices flowing. If you want more ideas for where to find th these, you know, these quotes, these videos, all of this inspirational content, just use the keywords that you saw me typing in, inspirational content for, or um, if you're looking for a specific person, like I said, that you're modeling after, um, type in inspirational videos by, um, just Google it. And you can also go to, you can also find uh, certain Facebook groups as well. Like I'm a member of a Facebook group that uh, puts out daily inspirational picture quotes. And whenever I, uh, you know, whenever I need something like that to, or whenever I want to share something like that with my audience, I just go ahead, go right into that group and just click on the share button. So um, you can do that. You can um, you can subscribe to someone's channel. Like I'm subscribed to Eric Thomas's channel, so that whenever he comes out with a new video, I'm the one to share that right away with my followers. Um, just anything that you know, anything that you hear through audio, maybe you've read something or blogs. You can share absolutely anything that has spoken to you, so that you can speak to someone on the other side of that screen. So the action step for you today um, is to come up with 6 to 12 pieces of content. So for example, one of those could be a picture quote, one of them could be a video, one of them could be a quote, a text quote, um, or, or one of them could be a story that you want to tell. Compile those pieces of, uh, of content, of inspiring content, and create a notebook in your Evernote account. And um, maybe you can label it in, in the inspirational category or inspiring motivational content, whatever you want to call it, and put those pieces of content in there as separate notes. So that when it comes to scheduling, it'll be easy to just grab those things and just paste them right into where, we, where it needs to go. All right, so you can go ahead and do that, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hello there, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit. And in this video, we're going to talk about the second type of content that you're gonna be posting, and that is educational posts. So anything that's informative for your audience that will help them learn something, and it's really, um, these types of posts are really good because being a resource for your audience really shows your credibility in your area. You know, if you're sharing informative, interesting, useful content that other people like, they will not only see you as a resource, but you they can potentially also share your content, whether that's on Facebook or retweeting it on Twitter or repinning it on Pinterest. Um, and that really is valuable for you because that way you'll be able to extend your reach out to a greater audience and you'll be able to get new fans and followers that way. It's kind of like a domino reaction, which is really cool. So you want to be putting out valuable content and there's four different types of posts that fall into the category of educational posts. So the one thing that you can do is you can be sharing community news. So anything that's going on in your field um, at a local event or anything like that would be a good thing to share. This person is actually in interior design and she was at a home and design show in her city and she decided to post about it. So that's something that's informative because, you know, I mean, that makes her look like she is someone in that field who is really involved in her community and she's always constantly learning about what's new in the decor, home and design world. So that's something that you can do and uh, maybe think about what area you're in and if you are involved in different community events, you can post about it. The second type of educational post that you can do is just sharing content from experts in your field. So here's an example by Mario Testino, who's actually a really famous photographer, and he posted about some work that he went and did, um, just, uh, I think it was something to do with, well, it was philanthropy work. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but 
Um, so he posted about this on his wall, and I saw some other photographers as well sharing this as a resource on their wall. Again, it just shows that you are involved in your field, and you know anything like this that's that's um, that's informative and and just a cool type of post, you can share that on your wall. Now the featured item or activity is is a cool one too because. In addition to you know learning about something, you can also be discovering a new thing, a new product, a new activity. In this example, um, Amanda Bond is a makeup artist, and she found a really cool item on a different makeup page. And this particular product is really cool because it has a spatula at the end of of um, of the brush here and you can actually scoop out the contents from the bottle which is easier and ladies I'm sure you know <laughs> that this would be a great help I know you know what I'm talking about here it would really solve a lot of you know trying to get the last bit of makeup out of the bottle so that's just something really cool that she discovered on a different page and she shared it to her own followers and fans so that's also something you could do that's an example of a featured item and the last type of post here is uh, sharing something that teaches other people something, so how to do something. In this example here, uh, Robert Lunte is actually, he has um, a vocal teaching, or vocal singing, a vocal singing, he teaches other people how to sing, so he has a vocal training business, and he uh, regularly puts out content teaching people different techniques of singing and just you know in putting out informative content related to that area he put out this video here how to stop YouTube and start singing seriously with real training and he put um, a really eye-catching picture here so um, another person saw that and shared it on their wall so now Robert is getting extra exposure with MIPS friends and followers on his page and um, that's just again another really great example of an educational post. Now this doesn't only have to be on Facebook. I just found these particular examples here on Facebook, but this can work with tweets. If you're putting out really valuable tweets, other people are more likely to retweet that and again you're reaching out to a greater audience. Same with Pinterest. Same with YouTube as well. So just start to think about how you can use these different types of educational posts in your field. And I want you to think of six to 12 ideas for yourself and create them as separate notes in an Evernote notebook. You can label that notebook um, educational posts or informative posts and start to come up with these ideas. So six to 12 if you can. And try to get some variety in there as well. All right, so that's your action step for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit here. So we're going to talk about the third category of content, and that's entertaining or funny posts. So this one's going to be fun. Um, you know, we all love to laugh and and smile and you know this just goes back to giving something to your fans and followers that will make them feel good and that will associate so that they will associate a positive experience with you when they come to your profile to see what's new what's up so we're gonna go through some examples together here the first thing that you can do is you can post something that's trending or viral um, it doesn't have to necessarily be something in your field it can just be something that's you know maybe it's just you know going crazy viral on YouTube and it's made you laugh and you probably know that it'll make someone on your friends list laugh so you can go ahead and post that I don't know if you guys remember this Charlie bit my finger video is really cute and um, and made lots of people happy and smile with that video so you can be posting trending or viral videos you can also be posting some funny episodes. So there's a lot of these web episodes coming up now, uh, but it can also be something related to a TV show, like this one's from The Tonight Show with uh, Jimmy Fallon. And this is an episode called Ew, and it's, uh, it's a really funny one. And, you know, I posted that 
or I shared it rather on my wall and lots of people loved it. And again, you know, it's not related to music or anything like that, although sometimes they do sing and it's kind of fun. Um, but it's, uh, it's just something, again, to make other people laugh. So another thing you can use are memes or memes, as my weird friend likes to call them. And uh, these are just pictures that have the just something something witty. It says it always will say something quite witty on it. Uh, and this is just an example here, where this guy is looking. He's at an art gallery looking at three blank white canvases, and that's called a piece of art. And it says, "I agree. You could have done that, but you didn't." So it's just something you know, something funny that you can post. Uh, this one looks like it can be a good one if you're a painter or if you're in the fine arts. There are lots of things that you can use as well. This one would be a cool one, you know, if you're an interior designer or something and you're sharing something really cool that you found. People love seeing something new and something unique. So if you can find a picture or, you know, a video showcasing something different, share it on your wall and, you know, other people will also think that it probably also think that it's pretty cool. And the fifth type of entertaining post are cute little dog, animal, kittens, whatever, whatever type of cute post that you can come up with. People really enjoy those as well. Animals are a huge they're extremely popular online. There are tons and tons of people making money online related to uh, 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 dog group, uh, Facebook fan pages, and just cute animal photos and that kind of thing. So uh, that tells you that there's a really huge group of people out there, or not even group. There's just a massive, massive amount of people out there that really enjoy looking at these types of photos. And every so often I'll send something that, or I'll post something that has a cute little message on it. Like for a Monday morning, you might post something like that. And again, it's just something that you're, you know, you're connecting with your audience, your fans, your followers on a different level. It doesn't always have to be about business or what you are doing specifically with your talent, but it's just showing the, um, the human side of things, I guess, because like I said, everyone loves to smile and laugh. So those are just some examples that you can use for entertaining posts. And uh, there's tons of content out there. Uh, you can use Google Images, go on YouTube, anything. Um, oh, you can also go to Facebook groups as well and join some of those cute animal groups or like funny, different funny groups that you can find, humorous groups. And just, you can always go in there once in a while and find content and share that. So for your action step today, you will be asked to come up with 6 to 12 pieces of entertaining content for your audience and save that in your Evernote notebook. So create a new notebook, call it entertaining or humorous funny funny posts and start to start to fill that up with different uh, pieces of content that you can use and that we will be scheduling later. All right, so I will leave you with that action step and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, this is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the fourth category for content and that is posting stuff about you. Now this doesn't mean that you have to expose your entire life online, which I know makes some people feel uncomfortable, but what it just means is that you are posting everyday life kind of stuff. You're showing people who you are, what you're doing. You're showing people that you you have to create and build things and go places and, and do things just like everybody else. So it really allows people to connect with you and see that you're a real human being and it takes away that business side of things that sometimes people have a guard up for. So um, these personal posts really allow people to get to know you better and that is a really big plus when building a loyal fan base online. So I'm going to go through a couple examples with you here. The first one is just sharing with people what you're up to and what you're doing right now. 
Uh, like if you went to go eat at a certain restaurant or you, if you just want to share something cool or interesting that happened to you that day. Uh, over here, I was just sharing with people that I went to the spa, so I snapped a couple of pictures and made it into one and posted that up online. Um, so that's an example. Uh, another example is you know, if you're traveling or if something different is happening for you, that's a really awesome time for you to be posting and show people what you're seeing and what you're doing. So that is a type of personal post that you can do. And uh, related to that as well, you know, people love to see behind the scenes kind of, kind of things. So if you are going to um, the store to go buy some materials for an upcoming project or if you're busy working on a new piece of art or a new project if you're in the recording studio you know if you're a singer you're you're making a new album um, anything like that that shows sort of the behind the scenes of what you do in your creative business people really love to see that I usually take pictures of when I'm behind the stage before I'm about to go up on uh, for a performance so that's an example. Um, over here, we were interviewing candidates for our intern position. So while we were waiting for the next candidate, we just snapped a photo and, you know, I was just sitting there reading and we just decided to share that online. And, you know, lots of people love to see that side of things because, again, it just shows that you're a regular person and you're just building things just like everybody else. So another type of personal post that you can do is sharing your thoughts. And you can really connect with your audience on a more deeper level when you share your thoughts with them about something. Now this can be an extended confession or it can be just an observation. And it really, it's up to you uh, depending on what you want to share. But just as an example here, I posted about a confession that I had I was actually struggling with something in my business and I just wanted to tell people about it and I uh, I actually learned something about myself because of going through that struggle so I kind of turned this personal post into an inspirational post as well and you'll start to see lots of overlap here between some of the different categories and, um, and, you know, that's something that's worked for me generally when I like to share my thoughts or do some sort of personal post in that sense, I like to turn it into something that other people can learn from. So that's just what I like to do and that's worked for me, but you can choose to do it however, however, which, whichever way that works for you. Here is a different kind of shareable thought post. Um, I was looking down at my feet one day. This was after I had left my day job, and I just I, I noticed that I was wearing high tops, and it was a weekday, and I was like, this is pretty cool. I'm wearing high tops, and it's a Tuesday, or whatever day it was. And, um, I, you know, just something like that was like I found appreciation in something really small that I never really knew existed until I was actually experiencing it. So that's just a thought that popped into my head and I decided to take a picture of that and post it and that was a really fun one because I got lots of uh, cool comments on that post as well. Uh, here's another type of shareable thought post. Um, maybe you all of a sudden feel a certain way and you want to share that with everybody. Um, I, I, something happened to me on this day where I all of a sudden felt really grateful. And this was because I got a message from my dad who shared a really cool quote with me. And I got so much value out of it that I wanted to share it with other people. So again, the overlap in uh, the personal post slash inspirational post. But um, this is something that I really like to do. And, you know, it got lots of, lots of engagement on it, which was really cool. So the third type of personal post that you can do, I guess, this is almost like it should it should warrant a category in itself. <laughs> and people really love posts about food. And um, you know, I'm not a very big foodie, but for some reason, lots of people love to see what other people are eating. So uh, when I'm doing a food post, it's more of like what's happening for me in that moment. I'm at a restaurant and I'm just snapping a picture of what I'm eating and putting that up online. 
and people people really enjoy to see that kind of thing. So um, that's just something you can do as well, just posting pictures of food or what you're eating. Maybe you made something that you want to share with people and um, you know you can maybe put in the recipe in there for them as well. So those are just different examples of personal posts that you can share with your audience. And so now it's up to you. I want you to come up with 6 to 12 pieces of content for personal posts and uh, to store that away in your Evernote notebook. And, you know, because the nature of this category of posts, a lot of it kind of happens in the spur of the moment type of thing, like whatever you're doing that day or, um, you know, whatever whatever's going on for you, it's it, it can be a spur of the moment type of thing. So not something that you would think about ahead of time, which is absolutely fine. So if you just want to take this coming week to just snap some photos with your phone or um, you know start start building content that way and just posting it as you go you can totally do that and um, and um, you don't have to store as many ideas in this category in your notebook for this action step um, the one thing that you can do actually with this category is you can you can prepare ahead of time the shareable thoughts uh, type of posts because those are things that you know thoughts if you've been thinking about something or if or if you have an observation that's come to mind you can always just bank those in your Evernote notebook and post them later so I will leave that action step with you you know uh, this coming week start taking photos and post them as you go of what you're doing what you're up to or bank some ideas in your Evernote notebook uh, to post for personal category posts so I'll leave that with you, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hi again. This is Social Media Marketing Simplified with Arit here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the fifth and final category for posting your content. And this is a promotional post. So promotional posts are quite different from the other categories that we've talked about. It's it's really important, of course, because the whole purpose of your social media marketing is you want to inform people about what it is that you are selling or what it is that you're doing. You know, you want to promote your website, you want to promote a video, you are asking, you might be asking people to buy something. So, of course, we want people to, the reason why we're marketing online is that we want people to see um, our talent and you want to showcase your artwork to the world. So it's really different in that sense though because you are asking your audience to do something. You're giving them to a call to action as opposed to where all of the other categories, the posts in those categories are more about giving something. So we're going to go through a few different examples here. These come in many different, uh, different forms. So a type of promotional post might be that you're asking your fans and followers to go look, some, look at something, to view something. So you might be asking them to check out a video or to check out a link that goes to your website. In this example here, I am promoting my, my cover music video that I did. I did a cover of Sing by Ed Sheeran, originally performed by Ed Sheeran. And I posted that link on Facebook. I posted the YouTube link here. And you know, I was promoting I was promoting that directly on my fan page. So just right off the bat, I've just been asking people to go check out a link. And all up until me posting that was a bunch of teaser posts. So I did kind of like a countdown of um, I think it was one week. So I started at seven days left and then six days left. And every day I would post a different picture, a different behind the scenes picture of of um, of the music video. And then on the day of, I just basically announced it just by outright telling people to check out my music video. So that's a, uh, one type of uh, promotional post. Um, you can also be asking people to view something in a sense that you want them to go download some, uh, some informative piece of content that you've created for them. So in this case, I had created the Dream Driven Goal Setting Worksheet back in September, and that's something that you guys would have filled out in the first section of this course. And I was just telling people that about what it is or why, why it would be helpful for them and posted a link to download the worksheet. 
So I was asking them to go view that link and download the worksheet there. Another type of promotional post is, to, um, is that you're asking your audience to buy something. And this one's a bit, uh, a bit different. You want to be strategic about your wording when you're asking someone to purchase something. I don't outright ask people to go ahead and buy a product. Um, for me, this it's a bit different. Uh, you can do whatever works for you. But for me, I always like to pair something else up with my call to action of buying something. So for example, here I had posted this poster which is for a big showcase that I was doing, a big performance, and you need to buy tickets to the performance. So instead of just me telling people to go buy tickets to the performance, I had posted that on a day where I was just working on finalizing the set list for the showcase, and I mentioned that I was pretty excited to perform the songs, and I asked people to go check out more details, and I posted the link. So that link led people to go buy tickets for this showcase. Here's another example of a buy post. With this one, I was more outright in just asking people to add a song to their playlist. So this is, um, this is my cover graphic for my fan page. So that's a static graphic that's always staying on top of the fan page. And if someone's clicking on that, because I have that download on iTunes button, if someone's clicking on that, I, it's pretty much telling me that they want more information about the song Cleopatra. So that's why I just put a direct link there to my iTunes page so that they can go ahead and purchase my song Cleopatra. Another way that you might put out a promotional post is uh, the fact that you're promoting your social media accounts directly and you're asking people to follow you on, um, on social media. You can do a lot of cross-promoting here with different social media accounts. Like for example, here I was promoting my Pinterest account on my Facebook page, asking people to follow me on Pinterest. So this way you can get more fans and follow more crossover with your fans and followers from one social media platform to another. And, um, and that can also be effective. When you are doing this, just make sure you have a really interesting uh, or just, a, just some sort of picture that really captures attention um, and captures people's interest so that you're not just posting a text um, a text post about asking people to follow you on Pinterest. Make it more engaging. With all of these things, you're asking your audience to do something and you want to add your own sort of personal twist to it so that it doesn't come off as harsh or abrupt. The, fifth, the fourth type of promotional post that you can do is asking people to engage with your post. So that's asking for a like or a share. Um, and you know, you're not outright promoting yourself, but in a sense, if you're asking someone to comment, you are essentially asking them to promote that post for you because the more likes you get, the more, in, uh, the more comments you get, the more repins and retweets, you, um, they are actually promoting your post for you because their own fans and followers will see that post as well. So if you're so here, for example, I had posted about um, a vision board that I just created, and you know I was telling people that it was really important to connect with what you want, and the vision board was the way for me to connect with that every day, and so I was asking people for what they do to connect with their dreams and their goals on a regular basis, and so I was asking people directly to share it in the comments below. And you know this is, I mean this this is effective. It works. I I did get, I did get comments on this post here, and you know it's just basically allowing people to engage more with what you're doing, and at the same time, you are reaching a wider audience because they're essentially promoting that post for you by engaging with it. Uh, one thing I did want to just to remind you though with these promotional posts remember that you're only asking 20 percent of the time most of the time you'll be filling up your social media pages with informative entertaining and educational content so this is why you may have noticed this already but this is why 
in the examples of the post there, you, you often saw me tying in the fact that I'm asking for something with a story or something inspiring or an interesting photo of some sort. So again, I'm not just outright asking them or I'm not just outright promoting, which a lot of people have a, uh, this guard that comes up if you're just outright asking them to purchase something. So in a sense, you're making it more personable. You're making it more um, more about informing them what it is that you're up to and less about asking for the sale. So this is where, again, you have overlap with the categories because you are you can promote something, but an, you can still also make it inspiring. You can turn it into an inspiring post. Or you can tell people what you're doing and then you can promote the you can promote something associated with that like for example what I did with my show there I was telling people that I was working on rehearsing or I was telling people that I was working on organizing the show in some form and I posted the link to the show there so those are a few examples of promotional posts that you can start to kind of think about and use in your own field and um, I want you to come up with six to twelve items that you have ideas for that you want to promote. So think about what product or service do you have or you know what um, what do you have online already that you want to promote? Is it your website? Do you want to do some cross promotion by asking people to follow you on Pinterest or on another social media platform? You can even ask people to subscribe to your YouTube channel. So start to think of these different ideas here and how they apply to you. And I want you to save those in an Evernote notebook and label it promotional posts so that we can have that to look at later. All right, so that concludes this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, it's Orit here with Social Media Marketing Simplified. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the seven steps to building your social media marketing plan for 2016. I had some great feedback from last year's video on this topic, so I really wanted to recreate this so that we can specifically talk about what's relevant in 2016. So before I, I go on with the first step, which you can see on the screen here, don't peek, um, but before I go on, I just wanted to say, you know, when I was first starting out on social media, I was completely overwhelmed with posting. I had set up all of my social media accounts for Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and, you know, because there were so many things to master, so many things going on, I found myself not really mastering anything. I would tweet here a couple times, post on Facebook once in a while, um, try to get a video out on YouTube, and it, because of that, I wasn't really putting out quality content on any of the platforms. I was just so involved in trying to post quantity. So what we're going to talk about here in this video is specifically so that you can focus on putting out quality content while you're marketing on social media because that's absolutely the most important thing that you can incorporate into a social media marketing plan. So step one, set an intention. Why are you even marketing on social media? What is your goal? Some of us have a goal to, um, to create awareness around a certain topic. Some of us have a goal to bring more traffic back to our website. Um, some of us might want to just be building a tribe, providing value um, to our audience. And, um, and um, you know, again, that relates to creating awareness, but just really building a tribe on social media for your brand. Whatever it is, it needs to be clarified because it can be so easy to get lost in just posting here and there. Um, but when you have a clear intention and goal on why you're posting on social media, it really helps to um, create that quality content that we're going after here. So that's step one. Step two is to define your avatar. So avatar is just another term for your target audience. But I, I specifically chose to use the word avatar because 
you really need to be knowing who you're talking to and really know that person in a sense that you can visualize this as an avatar. You can visualize who that person is, whether they're male or female, their age, what do they do in their spare time, um, where do they hang out most, what are their problems, what challenges do they face, and how can you be the one to solve those challenges for them? What are you doing to, to offer solutions for those, those problems? So really defining your avatar in that sense, knowing who you're talking to, who your target audience is, is going to be extremely important for this next step, which is to choose one social media platform to focus on. So this might be a little bit counterintuitive. You know, I, I'm supposed to just choose one social media platform. I'm, I thought I was supposed to be everywhere online. And in a sense, if, you, if that is your goal is to create massive awareness around your brand, then absolutely, you know, you need to be you need to be everywhere. You need to try and, and, and um, be posting valuable content on all of the social media channels that work for you. However, if you are first starting out, I highly recommend choosing one social media platform to focus on because you can go ahead and set up those other social media platforms. So you can go ahead and set up Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, all of that kind of stuff. But when you're creating a marketing campaign, you need to be able to put in the focus and energy into that one platform, make it grow. And once you have a, a an established plan and it's a system that's working on its own, so you're putting out quality content on a publishing schedule, you got this flow going, awesome, then you can shift your focus on to another platform. But for this simplified social media marketing platform, just choose one. And you might be wondering what social media platform to choose. And it relates back to your avatar. So think about where your target audience hangs out most of the time. You know, is it, are they more likely to be using Pinterest or YouTube or Twitter or Periscope? Um, it really depends on your target audience. For example, if you are a, um, if you are a makeup artist and you know your thing is in terms of putting out content is um, is putting out makeup tutorials then you might want to be focusing on either Pinterest or YouTube because Pinterest is really the platform where um, a, a lot of like that that female demographic is there right and there's tons of infographics on makeup and that sort of thing uh, YouTube might also be a good platform because there's tons of makeup tutorials on YouTube and that's where your market goes to look up how to do a certain look. So think about it in, in those terms. Where does your target audience hang out most? And choose that social media platform to focus on. If you're not sure where they hang out or perhaps they hang out on all platforms, um, then just choose the social media platform that you feel most comfortable working with and you enjoy using the most. So step four is to batch your content creation. So what that means is, is to really have a session where you're just brainstorming ideas for content to be posting on social media and to go ahead and create it then and there. And the reason why I say to batch it is because if we're creating a social media marketing plan, one of the things that I find out, um, tons of which I got a lot of feedback from you guys too, is keeping consistent with posting on social media. And that's, that's a challenge. And what I found really helpful is to batch your content creation. I do this with our YouTube tutorials, you know, I film, um, all of the, the videos for that week or even two weeks on a certain day and then I'll load them up the next day, edit them and load them up the next day. So this really helps to stay consistent because once you have all of your content, you're ready to go. You know, it's so much easier to just drip that content out and post them gradually throughout the week. So what what types of content should you be creating? Again, goes back to who your target audience is. Um, and what types of content will be valuable for them. 
but it's really important to identify that date and time of the week that you can just sit down and brainstorm ideas for content and go ahead, start filming those videos, start creating those images and um, coming up with the captions. Specifically for 2016, visual content is gonna be so, so much more um, integral to your marketing campaigns. Um, video and images are just, they connect with people more. You're really capturing more people's attention with visuals. So really keep that in mind when you're creating your content. Step five, all right, so you got all of your content. Now it's time to post. And um, you can come up with a publishing schedule for yourself. You know, you can decide to post them manually um, on a daily basis, or you can decide to maybe schedule some of the, the content and, um, and post manually throughout the day as, you know, other ideas come to mind. It's totally up to you. Um, it, it needs to work with your schedule. So I'm not going to tell you you need to be posting five times a day every day. Um, it really just depends on your schedule, your target audience, and the platform that you're using. Because if, for example, you're using Twitter or Pinterest, those types of platforms really, um, um, they need, in order to gain more visibility on those platforms, you need to be posting multiple times a day, every day. Um, whereas um, platforms like Facebook and YouTube, less often. So think about, again, think about your, um, your target audience and the social media platform that you're using to come up with a good publishing schedule so you can start posting your content. Number six is probably one of the most important aspects of your social media marketing platform is social media is a two-way conversation, right? It's not a one-way highway. It's not like you're posting and that's it. Um, it really needs to be a two-way conversation. So when you get a new follower, tweet back at them and say, thanks for the follow. How's your day going? Um, if someone comments on your post, re respond back to them. It's really important to engage with your audience and get into that two-way conversation, again, being so much more important in 2016 than it was before. It was still important before, but um, you know, now is really the demand for um, more personal connections, more real rawness. People want to connect with people and not with corporate kind of one-way advertising kind of stuff. So keep that in mind. And the final step is basically to just repeat uh, step four, five, and six until you feel confident that you have this system rolling um, that you can move your, or you can shift your focus on to uh, growing another social media platform. So again, it's to repeat the whole cycle of batching your content, coming up with the content, posting that content, interacting, and again, doing that, that whole cycle over again until you feel confident to move on to growing another social media platform. So those are your seven steps. I hope this has been really helpful for you guys. Hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Welcome back to the next video of this course. This is Orit here. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how to use social media for marketing, but specifically looking at which social media platform is best for you to use. And we already covered in the previous video the seven step plan for social media marketing. And the third step, if you recall, is choosing which social media platform to focus on growing first. So I wanted to record this video to help you decide which platform is best suitable for what you need. So we're gonna go look at the different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube, the, the ones that we are covering heavily in this course. But I've also added in two extra social media platforms that we can look at as well. So what are some things that we need to look at first? There are three things that we need to look at. And the first is your audience. So this is why this is step two of the plan, of the seven step plan. 
plan that we covered, right? Step two is identify who your audience is. Who are you targeting? So it's important to look at who your audience is because this will determine which platform is best for you to be on. Is it a younger or an older crowd? Is it a more professional crowd? Is it a more artistic crowd? Um, really looking at those differences will help determine where you, uh, where is best for you to market your content. And with that in mind, the second thing to look at is your content. So what types of content are you putting out or will you be putting out? Is it um, video? Are you really good on video? Are you really good at creating stunning visual content? Or are you just good at writing? It might just be blogging or micro blogging. So looking at your content as well. And the final thing is your goal. So overall, what is your goal for your creative business, passion project, whatever you're marketing? Is it to just create brand awareness or is it to actually sell something? Maybe you're in e-commerce and you create uh, purses or jewelry or you know whatever it might be. Um, so maybe you're in e-commerce and your goal is really to sell more of your creations. So once you have a better understanding of who your audience is, what type of content you'll be putting out and your goal, you'll be able to better match this information with the information that I'm just going to show you now about who's on each social media platform, what the goal of each platform is, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so let's first take a look at Facebook, the social media giant of the World Wide Web. So with each platform, we're gonna take a look at the audience, the purpose, and what that platform is best for. So with Facebook specifically, there are over 1.4 billion active users now. So that statistic might change. And this is why I didn't put exact numbers on these, but just to give you an idea of how big and vast this social media platform is, this is why it includes a range of ages. So there's all ages and all types of industries on this platform. So it can really be a good starting point if you're not yet sure who your audience is and you're still trying to figure that out. The purpose of this platform is really all about building relationships. So really connecting with others, having a conversation, and it's best for building brand loyalty and brand awareness. So by you putting content out on this platform on a continuous basis, other people will start to be aware of what it is that you're doing and then therefore you can establish relationships directly with your potential clients or customers on this network. The next platform is Twitter. So this audience is really specific. It's more of like a city-based urban crowd um, and very much also an entrepreneurial crowd. Twitter is a micro-blogging platform, which means you have 140 characters to say whatever you're gonna say and just put it out into the Twitter dome. So for this reason, there's a lot of short blasts of news and articles, people linking to blog posts and videos, uh, pictures as well. And it's not just about sharing your own content, but it's about sharing the content in your industry. So this is why Twitter is great for establishing brand authority because by you blasting out different news, relevant articles, any information that's relevant to your industry, you're positioning yourself as a megaphone for your industry. So for example, if you're someone in photography and you're sharing all different types of great articles, what's new in, what's new in photography, what other people, so your role models are doing in the photography industry, again, you're establishing a brand authority. Twitter is also great for PR and conversation because you're able to quickly spread ideas and news on this platform through retweeting. So if your goal is to really position yourself as, and your brand as an authority in your industry, then you might consider using Twitter as your platform of choice. Let's look at YouTube. So YouTube is primarily a video platform. So the audience on YouTube is a, a huge audience, all types of ages and from all different industries. Primarily, the unique thing about this audience is that 
they are a DIY crowd because people come to YouTube to search for how to do things. So for you, if you are someone who wants to teach how to do certain things, then YouTube is a great platform. For example, if you are putting out how to do makeup tutorials or how to create certain designs or how to, um, how to organize your home, this is why YouTube is great for building brand awareness and authority. Because if you're someone who are who is putting out these tutorials, then people will come, will see your brand as a resource. Okay, on to Pinterest. So there are over 80% female users on Pinterest. So if you're catering to the female crowd, then this might be a good platform for you. The purpose of Pinterest is users come here to discover ideas and, and look for sources of inspiration on fashion, beauty, food, art, design, DIY kind of things. It's all about professional, very visually attractive content on Pinterest. So the users on Pinterest find pins, which are visual content, so they're images, and they save these pins to boards that they have curated. So they can have different boards. They can have one for food, for photography, for, for uh, fashion and, and beauty, and this is why this platform is really good if you are putting out stunning visual content. Specifically, professional visual content works well on Pinterest. Pinterest isn't for everyone though, so keep in mind that it is quite a niche platform. So if you are someone who does cater to female users and you're, you are in uh, food, beauty, fashion, art, or any design industries, then this might be a good platform for you to use. Pinterest is also a buying crowd, so that means that they are they will actually purchase things directly from seeing pins on in their feed. So if you are in e-commerce and you're selling something physical related to fashion, beauty, art, design, any of these types of creative industries, then Pinterest will do well for you. So there's two more platforms that we're not totally focusing on in this course, but I wanted to put them in this video so you can compare the different types of audiences. LinkedIn is a platform that is primarily business related. So this is a network specifically for business professionals and it is an older crowd, primarily older than 35 years of age. So the purpose of LinkedIn is again to put out news and articles similar to Twitter, but it's very different from Twitter in the fact that you're not microblogging and you're also able to connect one-on-one -on -one with other professionals directly. So you're able to check out other people's profiles, what are they doing in their businesses, what their sort of online resume looks like, and this is what a LinkedIn profile is. It's like an online resume. And through that, you can directly message other professionals to connect with them. So this is why LinkedIn is good for business development. So if you're someone who is looking to hire more people on your team, or you want to create partnerships in your business, um, if you are a B2B business, meaning you cater directly to other businesses, you help other businesses, and um, you're, you're not necessarily only directly with consumers, then LinkedIn will also be a good platform for you to be on. And the last social media platform that I wanted to go over is Instagram. So Instagram is also about putting out visual content, but it's a little bit more casual than Pinterest. Pinterest was about prof putting out professional visual content, but here in, on Instagram, it's more about being artistic in a way and, and being a, more raw. So the audience on Instagram is under 35 years of age, a younger crowd, they are an artistic crowd. And the purpose of Instagram is to share visually appealing content and build relationships through the content that you're posting. So this is best for, again, those creative industries of fashion, food, design, art, entertainment even. Um, and by putting your content out on Instagram, you're able to reach a younger crowd who appreciates that artistic, raw type of material.
So that was a general overview looking at the differences between these six social media platforms. In the next section, we're going to look at in detail Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. So this is why your action step for this video is to decide which social media platform is best for you to focus on first. So based on all of this information that we looked at and what types of audiences, content, what each social media platform is best for, match that up with what is going on for you in terms of your goals, your audience, and your content and decide which platform you're gonna focus on first. All right, guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one, bye. Hey guys, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the content in this video. If you're still watching this, I'm assuming you liked what you saw. And I wanna be able to share with you how you can get access to the rest of the course. I will actually give you a coupon code so that you'll get 50% off of this course. So instead of $20, all you need to do is click on the link in the description below to come to this page here, click on redeem a coupon and type in YouTube video right here. When you hit apply, then you'll be able to see it change to $10. That's 50% off this course just because you're watching this on YouTube here. When you enroll in this course, you'll get 38 lectures, 4.5 hours of content. It's a 30 day money back guarantee and you'll be able to really get lifetime access to this course and continue seeing new lectures that I'll be adding because I'm, I'm always updating the course. Social media is full of updates all the time. So we need to be able to keep this course updated, which is what you'll be getting. So in the rest of the course, I'm gonna share with you setting up your Facebook, your Twitter, your YouTube with everything you need and Pinterest as well. I'm gonna show you how to integrate your social media so you can get more people to see you on those channels, more exposure for yourself. We're gonna look at creating your publishing plan. So I'm gonna share some tools with you that will help you post on autopilot and will really help you manage marketing in a consistent manner online. I'm also going to share with you a social media strategy template. So you're gonna get a worksheet that's kind of like a calendar and so that you'll be able to easily schedule your social media content that you've created and be sure that you're on point with releasing valuable content to your audience online. Also, as being a student of this course, you'll be able to get access to my complete toolbox of resources. So that's tools for social media marketing and resources, articles, videos. You'll also get discounts on my other courses that I have on Udemy. So go ahead and click on the take this course button and I'll be really excited to see you inside the course. Back from the dead.